And it came to a point, it was a gentleman from Egypt actually, and he was talking with me about this and he said, you know, I will be willing, because I was trying to convert him to Christianity by the way, and he said, I'd be willing to go to your religion if your religion's better than my religion. Well, I knew I had him because I'd been watching this guy for three months. Look, Muslims have to pray five times a day. Christians don't have to do that. Muslims have to fast the whole month of Ramadan. <laughs> Muslims, the Christians don't have to do that. Muslims have to pay zakat. Christians don't have to do that. They, you should, but you know, it won't make you a non-Christian if you don't do it. But it makes you a non-Muslim if you don't do these five pillars. And you have to do something called Hajj, a pilgrimage, once in your life. You have to. If there's a way for you to do it, you have to do it. Otherwise, you can't call yourself a Muslim. Whoa! Christianity is a lot easier than that! So I figured we had this guy, we're going to fill up the tub and dunk him tonight. Got him! Well, that was a little crude, but you know, oh, I am from Texas, so <laughs> give me that license there. Anyhow, then he finished the sentence. He said, no, 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 you don't understand. He said, I'll go to your religion if it's better than my religion, but you need proof. I said, what? Religion is not about proof, man. It's about faith. He said, in Islam, we have both. We have faith, but we have the proof to back it up. Now, he got me on that. I thought, I said, do you mean to sit there and tell me as a Muslim you can prove there is God? He replied back, you mean to sit there and tell me as a preacher for Christianity that you can't? That was pretty good. Now the only thing left for me to do is say, okay, what's the proof? And that's what the Muslims are waiting for you to ask. What is the proof? There are so many things that are around us every day that you and I would agree right away. That is a proof. I just never thought about it before. Here's another proof. I never thought about it before. The Quran tells us about those things so that we can look at it from a perspective of, you know what? We didn't create this universe. We didn't create ourselves. Where did everything come from? We're doing a series right now about science and Islam and really enjoying doing that too. And I was surprised at how much of the medicine we know today comes from Muslim scholars from a thousand years ago. Amazing. In fact, right here in your community, you have a clinic that is sponsored by the Muslim doctors here. And they're happy to share a lot of that information with you. You'd be really surprised to learn it. I was very surprised. But in the Quran, it constantly comes back to the subject almost on every single page. In fact, I only found two pages. Can you imagine this? Out of 604, I only found two pages that didn't have God's name on it. So it always comes back to talking about God, talking about what He does, talking about what He doesn't do, talking about His relationship to us again and again and again. The proofs offered here are the ones that are right in front of every one of us. Talking about the mountains. And how the mountains, especially if you look at the European, uh, the, what do they call that? The, the mountain line anyway, across Europe. These have long extended looks like tent pegs coming down that hold the earth's crust there. And do you know, this is mentioned in geography books. And it's exactly what it said in the Quran 1400 years ago about Autad, these things that's for the mountains. Now another thing it mentions is the fact that the earth is winding. It talks about the sun being in an orbit. Now by the way, we didn't know that. People used to think that the sun went around the earth, right? And then when we discovered, no, the earth is winding and it's going around the sun, so we figured the sun was the center of the universe for a long time. Then we came to find out, no, the sun and the earth are both in orbits. But that didn't contradict anything we found here. It actually confirmed it. If we leave the universe alone for a minute and just look within ourselves, we're surprised at how many things that we find in the Quran 
that they only discovered in the last few years. Just a few centuries back, I guess it was William Harvey that talked about the circulation, the blood, where milk comes from in a cow. Quran says 1400 years ago that milk comes from a conjunction between the intestine and the blood in the cow. That's pretty interesting, a good proof that there really is a God. Another one, when it talks about the creation of a human being and where did we all come from. And I'm going to wrap it up with this. There are many others. I invite you to take one of those Qurans they got out there. You can read it for yourself. But the way the Quran started when it first came to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was like this. He was a very good man, a person who did not like what was around him. In his days, the people were pretty evil. They worshipped statues and idols all the time. They were very superstitious. They were very oppressive. And whoever had the most strength and power, he was going to be in control. Not like today where we got all nice people in control, you know. He didn't like it so much so that he, wouldn't, he didn't drink alcohol. They were alcoholics. He didn't chase after women. They were all womanizers. He never oppressed anybody. He, was not, he had some very beautiful names that they called him by because they had big respect for him. But he would still leave them for long periods of time and go out into the mountains, in a cave in particular, and he would meditate there. And while he was in that condition, the angel Gabriel, the same angel that came to Mary, came to him and grabbed him and released him and ordered him Iqra. And he said, Ma'ana Bikari. And the angel grabbed him again and released him. And again commanded him, Iqra. This happened according to the Hadith three times. And each time he was insisting, I'm not one of those who does that. What? He was telling him to recite. And he said, I'm not a reciter. I don't do that. In fact, I don't even know how to read and write. Then the angel said it like this. You want me to wait a second? Gave me a chance to breathe too. <laughs> then the angel said the whole verse. Audhu billahi min shaitan rajim. Iqra bismi rabbik alladhi khalaq khalaq al-insana min alaqa Iqra wal rabbuk al-akram Alladhi alamu bil kalam alamu insana malam yalam And those were the first words ever revealed in the Quran. Go to chapter 96, you'll find it. Chapter 96, very beautiful. Now in the translation, I'm sure it's going to say read, but trust me, it means recite. Recite, that's how it begins. Recite. In the name of your Lord, recite. In the name of your Lord, who created human beings from an alaka. Whoa. Recite, and your Lord is so generous, who taught human beings how to read and write. Taught them what they didn't know. And that was the beginning of the Quran. What's an alaka? That's the only point we've got right now and then we'll be finished. What's an alaka? I had to go to the dictionary, Arabic dictionary is called a maurid, and I went to it and looked in it. And you got several things, but the ones that are the most pronounced there is saying that it's something that hangs or clings, that remind me of a refrigerator magnet. You get any of them hanging on your door or your refrigerator, you know what I'm talking about. And it says that these, you know, these things here clinging, this is an alak. But it also says that those things in the Amazon River, you know what those uh, le leeches, when they get on you and suck your blood, you know, kind of like a lawyer, something like that. And uh, <laughs> Thank you for laughing, my jokes aren't much better than that. <laughs> but anyway, so here is this thing that clings, but then look at the description, it says with it also a blood clot. Now that's pretty 
profound to make a statement like that. I mean, you're saying it clear up. It's, there's no ambiguity. I didn't know if I could say that right or not, but I think I got through it all right. And in the way it's pronounced here, in the Arabic, khalaqal insana min Allah, it's clear. So all you got to do is just prove it, is just prove that that's not true. But how would we know? What does that mean? It wasn't until very recently when we had the ability to go with a microscope inside of a mother at the point of conception, right after she has conceived and that egg is fertilized, what does that egg do? It attaches itself immediately inside of the womb. True or false? And causes a what? Blood clot. True or false? And it clings. True or false? And what is the shape? I want to know what's the shape. And you can't imagine my shock when I saw a picture of how, this is in embryology now, it has nothing to do with religion, embryology, and here is a picture and you look at it, it looks just like a leech, exactly like a leech. So what are you supposed to believe after you see that? What are you supposed to think? Lucky guess. <laughs> Could be. It took a lot for me really though to get to Islam, not because of words, and not really about concepts, but because of pride. Because it was really hard for me to admit I was wrong. In fact, in my case, I don't know about you, but that's like one of the hardest tests there is in this life, is to really own up to something and say, you know what, I was wrong. I was dead wrong, flat wrong. I'm sorry guys, I was wrong. Is that hard to do? It is. Maybe that's why some people need to have somebody else pay their bill for them. Maybe it's why somebody would like to have somebody else stand up for them on the day of judgment and say, I'll take all the sins for this guy. Because he don't want to admit he's wrong. That could be. But my message today isn't about preaching to anybody. More than just to say that what I discovered for myself convinced me that there is a God. I have no doubt about that at all. And it is the God of Adam and Abraham and Moses and David and Solomon. And it is the God of all the prophets. And definitely it's the God of Asa, Ibn Maryam. And without a doubt, it's the God that Muhammad, peace be upon him, talked about. But that conclusion has to be for each person to look at and see what they come up with. Each person has to look at it from their own point of view. Because that's the free will that God gave every one of us. He lets us choose. I like that. 